Hi, in this video, I want to show you what makes Full Event so special. I want to show you the software, but I also want to give you a bird's eye view of the structure of the software. I think this combination would really help you understand what's so unique about how we are building things. If I start with the first box here, this is the schedule structure of the whole thing. And already there, it starts one of our most unique components. Full Event is probably the only software who takes all your schedules and bring them into the software. So far, every organizer I've talked to, when they start planning their local classes or workshops or festivals, they open up a spreadsheet and they start building their program there, meaning they're keeping the source of the truth around their timetable and schedule outside of their booking solution. This is a big cause of a lot of the manual work as well as poor data insight to be able to make better decisions in the future. So we wanted to make sure all of that exists inside of the software. First, we put things in containers to be able to keep the data clean, separating, for example, your local classes from your parties or workshops or however you want to structure the whole thing. And then you put things in a, what we call a schedule set. A schedule set is basically holding all the schedules for that specific course round or event. So you can create any number of schedules. This can be schedules for each course or a track of your workshop, or even your DJs or teachers and volunteers and so on. And then you build the activities and you link these activities into those different schedules. I wanna show you this here. So here we have the containers. So for example, in this case, I chose to separate them by large festivals or the ongoing classes and then the course round that we're doing. But these are, completely agnostic. You decide exactly what you want to name them. Then when we create the schedule sets, here's an example of Chase Festival and weekly courses. So if I look into the schedule, here I've created a schedule for the DJs. I've created a afternoon program and a morning group. And a, as an example, a teacher schedule. So as I go in here, I can create now the specific activities that they have. The activity holds the location and the time information, for example. For each schedule, of course, you can do any number of activities, but importantly, you can link the same activity. So I can link that activity into other schedules. By having one activity linked to the different schedules, you're gonna benefit from, for example, first of all, have a clean data, knowing exactly that this is the activity that was used by these different uh, participants so that when you get feedback for that activity, you know exactly what's happening. But also, for example, if you have a workshop and you want to have taster classes, then you have suddenly multiple groups merging into one group. Or if you have a local course happening and then you also have a free practice time and you want to have multiple people from different courses come to this practice time. So there are many reasons why we wanted to be able to merge one activity with different schedules. The next thing I want to show you is that you can take a schedule and you can put it on a recurrence. This is, of course, a very good thing to have for weekly courses, right? So I go here and I create a, for this Monday course, I have a recurrence rule saying this is going to happen for six weeks in a row. So I can choose frequency interval and whether it's an inclusive or exclusive recurrence. In this case, for example, I, I created a pause over the Easter holiday. So we can see how this looks like in a calendar form that we can publish on a website or give to our students. So here, for example, there are two weeks, then there's a gap, and then they continue for another four weeks. And inside of the gap, I've created some specials because we want to still offer some light activity. And Notice here there's a follower special and a leader special. I'm just making these up. But if I go to a student's booking, every, every student who is booking into one of these programs, they get an individualized link so they can see exactly what they have booked into. So if I look at this one, this one signed up as a follower, so they get the regular course as well as the follower special. And they can open up this one and get some instructions of what this course is all about if they want to. And of course, if I look at the other one, this one now signed up as a leader and will get the leader special on a different day. So each person has their calendar and their activities all listed in one place for themselves. While we're here, I want to show you one more thing. And that is that any forward facing text is collected into assets. A forward facing text is, for example, 
if I go here and click this, this is what the student would see. That text is collected in these assets. So this one is in uh, English and the next one is in German. And these are regionalized. So for example, it can be any alphabet. It can be in any dialect. So in if you have English and you want to have Welsh, for example, you could do that. And of course, when somebody comes on the website, and uh, have that set up on their browser. They can see it in their, in their dialect if it's available. But also by having these structured like this, this is something we can very easily send to ChatGPT sort of uh, solution and have it translated for you. This way you can offer multiple languages and have them all comfortably translated for you automatically. Now I wanna take you to the next component here, which is how you take your schedules and put them into products. And by keeping these separate, it allows you to be much more refined about who gets what offer. So for example, you want to maybe make a distinction between what your members get versus what non-members get. Or if you have a festival, you want to separate between different countries and you want to control that the event is truly international. So you want to reserve some spots for different countries. Or frankly, you want to have different pricing for your local customers versus your international customers for whatever reason. So let me show you that on the software. We go to the products. Here, for example, let's take Chase Festival as an example. Here, I made a hypothetical situation where I made a booking page for the Swedish team. And I want it to be in Swedish, and I have Swedish Kronas, and they can get some description here in Swedish if I want to, and then they can book their tickets here. By having this separate for, from, for example, what I want to have for my uh, local students, I can have different currencies, different descriptions, different pricing levels, and even different options. What's not there yet, but what we will be able to do is to control again, like if you want to have specific ratios between number of people who come from different countries, or you want to make sure your local students have enough tickets to be able to all participate, you'll be able to control who can book how much by having this separation. The other thing I want to show you is that uh, if we take this for our local classes, you decide what sort of tickets you're offering. So here's a leader pass, a follower pass, a, a couple pass. Again, these are agnostic. You can create one that is saying flexible or mix or whatever you want to name them. And if you want to have groups or couples, you, you just take those and you put them, both of them inside of the same ticket. By having this structure, we will be able to keep track of your capacity and the ratios no matter how you combine them together. So one of the next things we're building is ratio control, where you'll be able to say, I want to have this kind of ratio balance in my classes between, for example, leader and follower tickets. But I also want to have this tolerance, meaning for every five leaders, I can tolerate one extra follower or vice versa. So if we go back to our overview here, I've given a little hint on how people can book the classes. This is here where you have these tailored individual pages. What we are also planning is to be able to have uh, integration with your website. So it will look like something what we have on the SwingStep website where everything looks like it's part of this website. One more thing I want to show you is this last box here where you can link your events into a public marketplace. Now, this is a choice. You just uh, select if you want to do that. We've already built the infrastructure for that. If I remove this code here, this site will fundamentally eventually act like a public marketplace. You'll be able to decide if it's going to be just on your website, on private uh, landing pages, or on a public marketplace. Because we want to help you get as much distribution of your events as possible to also support you with the marketing activities that you have as well. This way, you'll always have everything connected to your software. You'll always be able to maintain your ratio controls, for example, no matter from where you sell it. So if I go back here, you will always be directed to a shopping cart where per activity, the system can double check if there is capacity available, if you need to go on to a waiting list and how much the pricing of that will be. And then you proceed to the checkout process that way. So this one is for premises. Premises is your venue, your location, but Eventually, it's also going to be a, a virtual space if you want to. And so you control what kind of spaces you have, what kind of rooms are in, within that space. And also the map URL is an interesting thing I want to I show you. So let's go here for a second. 
for every location, you can list the spaces and they can be spaced inside of a space and uh, it can also be in different configuration. If you have, for example, one of those walls that can be taken out and put back in so the space can be uh, bigger or smaller depending on your configuration. And then of course you give the capacity of it. But the map URL is an interesting thing because it allows you to give your students, for example, information like, hey, your next class starts at this time. You, you need to get going now if you want to be there in time. So you can have these kind of notifications for your students. But you as an organizer, especially if, you start, if you're organizing something a little bit more complex, you might need to get warnings about if you create a schedule with multiple locations and the time the participants or the teachers have to go from this location to the other one is not long enough, we'll be able to give you warning notifications that there's something wrong with your schedule. Your teachers or your students won't be able to get in time from one location to the other one. This is something we experienced a lot with, for example, Chase Festival, where we had to triple check all our schedules and the flow of the participants and the teachers so that we don't make such mistakes, for example. There's some stuff that we're also planning that is not there. There's no infrastructure for it yet. And that is, for example, a, a talent account. A talent account is your teachers, DJs, volunteers, and things like that. They can use it actually also for private lesson booking, payment management, schedule management, attendance, communication with admin. So a lot of these practical things that we need for our teachers to be able to handle, but also for your students. We will set it so that you can work with or without an account. Some people don't want to have an account, but if the students do open up an account with you, then they'll be able to see all their activities in one place, connect to a partner group and sign up together, get maybe personal recommendations, and also provide feedback per class. And of course, if we want to offer membership, we need a structure that allows them to log in and see their information like that. So far, what we've been focusing on is to make sure the data structure of the software is set up in the right way so that we can really achieve the goals we want to achieve in the future. And now that we've done that, what we want to do is to start building, for example, drag and drop solutions. So it's much easier to build the schedules inside of the software, keep them all stored in the right way. But what's really cool is that this incredible modular approach that we've been taking, having all these different anchors that we can use for different type of schedules for the uh, booking pages and so on, allows us to introduce prompt-based solutions, meaning you will be able to describe what you want. For example, clone me last year's schedule set for this course round or for this festival and just change this, 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 and that. And the software will be able to build it for you. Even more, you will also be able to handle a lot of the registration processes just by using prompts. This is because our goal is to really be able to free you up from everything that is not focusing on the dance or the art form and the community. Meaning we want to automate as much information as possible, give you as much data as it's useful for you to be able to make good decision and distribute your events into as many places as possible so you can have better marketing and sales results with your activities. All right, as you can imagine, this is a huge project and we've already spent two and a half years building this infrastructure that I've shown you. And now we are raising capital from investors in order to onboard more engineers and designers to really get the product out into your hands. And here's how you can help make that happen. Take your phone, point it towards a QR code and go to the interest list we prepared there for you. It's free, non-committal, and even comes with a great discount once the software is ready. So if you have local classes or events or workshops or parties, anything like that, or know if somebody has those, please help us increase the number of people on this list. This really helps investors recognize that there is an interest in our community and it's a community worth investing in. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to stay tuned with the next videos we're publishing here. All right, have a good one, my friend.